And so I went and bought this little great name puppy. It was solid white and had beautiful blue eyes. So we went and picked it up. And I picked this dog up and looked at it. And the reason that it was I got a good deal on it was it was deaf. Nothing against the deaf dog. And it was a good deal. But had I, I'd have still bought it. Because it was, it was cute and I had a lot of fun out of that little pup. So it had these real pretty blue eyes. And I looked at it and all I could think of was white hair, blue eyes, Paul Newman. So I named her Newman. And the ex would often take her car keys or whatever. But she would walk up to the dog and she'd go, Newman. Newman. Because she was convinced that somehow, some way, this dog would get its hearing back. I just accepted it for what it was. It was a deaf dog, and it was huge. This dog was could stand on her hind legs and put her paws on my shoulders and rest her chin on my head. And I loved the old dog. She, you know, you could hug on her and stuff, and she'd lean up against you. Anyway, Hannah, the eight, who's now 18, was in the little carry-all car seat thing. We was coming home from church one day or something, and I stopped to open the gate. And she pulled on up to the house. So you pulled up to the house and around the back and you went in and there was a window and a window and then windows over here. So I let them in the gate and I shut it back and I just walked up through the yard towards the end of the house and she carried the in, in the little car seat. So I walked up and I, as I walked up, I could hear her through, we had the windows open. I could hear her through the window and she was doing the hearing test on the dog again. But Newman's favorite place to sleep downstairs was, and we had like a summer kitchen downstairs, and where a, a dishwasher should go, there was just a space in the cabinets, and Newman would crawl back up under there and lay down and go to sleep. And half of her would be sprawled out on the floor, then half of her would be under the countertop. And I look, and Hannah's just a few months old, and she's sitting on a pool table. And I look over here, and, and Becky's over there and she's got her keys out and I'm just standing at the window watching this and Becky's got her keys out and she's going Newman Newman like that there are times in your life Larry <laughs> that you know the right thing to do and the right thing to do would have made my presence known went on in the house I chose not to do that <laughs> which may be why things went the way they did later. <laughs> but anyway, all I could, this was going on, and, and I could see the dog. Newman was asleep, dead to the world. And I stood there for a second, and I put my hands up to the window, and I waited. And she went, shh, 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 shh. Newman. And I went, what? <laughs> and she moved backwards like, like James Brown. You know how James <laughs> Brown does it? <laughs> There's a little shuffle thing, and she was like, and she did this crab walk, James Brown shuffle, straight past my youngin in the car seat, leaving Hannah with what she believes is a possessed demon dog that can now talk, straight up the steps. I really wasn't a whole lot better because I was sprawled out in the front yard just laughing my hind end out better. And the, the poor dog just laid there and slept, never knew, never knew what happened, never knew any of this stuff had ever gone on, but she was like, Gone. <laughs> <laughs> Is she